What's up guys? Welcome back to Seize the Speed today for another special car review. Today to the right side of me is a 2023 Tesla Model 3 Standard Plus. Let's get into it. Now if you've been watching the channel for a little while, you know that I'm a true gearhead. I like gasoline powered vehicles, whether it's your trucks or your little sports cars or anything of that nature, things that make some noises and drive it a bit of soul. But um, I was super curious to get my hands on what the fuss is about, you know, this car's been extremely popular out there, everyone's trading in their Camrys, Corollas, 3 Series into a Model 3, and um, I really wanted to see if it's as good as advertised, and um, this particular one might not be the best representative for the super crazy performance and acceleration, but the rear wheel drive model is the one that's best priced for most users starting around the 40s um, but options gets a little more expensive but with the tax incentives you can get these well in the 30s which is crazy I mean a highly optioned Toyota Camry or Honda Accord can cost that much even a fully loaded Corolla could rival this um, price wise at least and even in size and you know the body style and things like that. This particular one as I mentioned is the standard range or the rear wheel drive about 270 miles on a charge. Um, you can obviously go to a dual motor or a performance after this which will give you better range and also better 0 to 60. So usually when we look under the hood of a vehicle we're talking performance however this is not really a hood it's a frunk and it gives you a little bit of storage and as I should demonstrate um, it's probably enough for a small backpack, not nothing too crazy. However, let's talk about performance while we're at it. Um, this thing, as I mentioned, does 270 uh, miles of range and it does 0 to 60. Somewhere in the fives, I believe it's a 5.8 seconds 0 to 60. The all wheel drive does uh, 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds and gives you about 325 miles of range. And the performance is supposed to do 3.1 and gives you 315 miles of range. And while we're looking at all the storage space of this vehicle, it does have automatic open and closed trunk. It looks like it could be a hatchback. However, this glass roof one piece thing doesn't allow it to. Uh, and this is the storage we get out of the Tesla Model 3. It's actually a pretty deep trunk. If you look, you have a lot of room before you get to the seats and you can also fold down the seats to give you plenty of more room. There's a little bit of uh, extra storage down here where your spare usually is in most cars. The trunk overall is not bad. I just wish they would have done a hatchback. However, um, I feel like the glass was uh, part of a cost saving and um, you can't complain. It's a pretty cool design. All right, so it's raining, so I'm gonna wrap it up quick. But overall styling of the Tesla Model 3, it's the egg-shaped design every auto manufacturer is going after. The style of a three-box sedan as you know it traditionally is going away. Um, I just wish that since it looks like a hatchback, it actually was a hatchback. Aside that, the front end kind of reminds me of a Porsche. Um, the Model 3 with these headlights kind of looks like the Runyak headlights Porsches used to have back in the day. It's an attractive looking front end. This massive glass roof is definitely a design plus. I absolutely love it, I just wish it did open, it would be cool, or if it actually had solar panels on it, like they've been promising forever, but Elon says it's not efficient, which makes sense, but still, it'll run some things in the car. Um, this one has these aero design wheel hubcap thingies, you can take them off as you can, and uh, they'll look a little bit better as with a compromise a bit in the range, but I don't mind it, I think it makes sense of own the 08 Civic Hybrid, which had much uglier wheels than these, so I'm fine with Now, three-quarter view, same thing. It's just a little bit bubbly, egg-shaped thingy I'm talking about, especially the fact that there's no exhaust or, I guess, a diffuser, which there is a little one uh, made out of plastic. It looks all right. Um, just makes it look too round and too smooth compared to a traditional design. However, comparing it to something like the EQS or the EQE, I think Tesla still looks much, much better. Here on the door sill, you can see the camera system right there. Another one on the fender right there. This is the way into the Tesla Model 3. So you push this in and door pops up. So getting into the Tesla Model 3, and first things first, this is what the key looks like. It's literally a card. Um, honestly, I feel like, I don't know how I feel about this. You can do it on your phone as well, but uh, this just does, this just feels cheap. I don't really like this whole idea of a key card. 
it's a little bit weird. I mean, uh, I don't know, take it or leave it. It's on the door pillar over here to unlock it. You hold this next to it and the car unlocks, same thing. You can also turn on uh, walk away, uh, lock and unlock, but I don't know how good uh, and trustworthy that would be. All right, so to get this car quote unquote started, you need to put the key card right there and there you go. Now it's unlocked and ready to go. Here's the cabin of a Model 3 and as you can see, it's pretty simple. There's really no clutter, nothing crazy. It's a giant screen, which has literally every information and control in this car aside a couple of physical buttons like your hazards up here, which I think legally they had to put a physical button in. Uh, and also your uh, gear selector, which the plat doesn't even have this anymore. It's just kind of assumes where you want to go or you have the swipe thing on the new screen. And then you have your turn signals, which the plat also doesn't have. When you turn the turn signal on, you get a nice view of your blind spot. And also your windshield wipers are on here. It's just press this button and boom, there they are. And then, if you want to control them, you have to go ahead and change the speed on here. So, I put it on like maximum speed. Boom, that's what it looks like. Auto. There we go. All right, the next important actual physical button in this car are these two wheels on the steering wheel. So, this one right now is controlling the volume. However, if you were to, for example, want to set your mirrors, you would click that and then boom, look at that. Now it's serving as your mirror control. Or for example, if you were to go back and change your steering position, for example, boom. Now it's controlling that. Right and left telescopes it, up and down is up and down. So these better not go out or half the functionality of this car is up in there. The rest of the center console, you have wireless charging pads, two of them specifically, which is pretty neat. You have a little storage situation here. It's actually pretty deep and pretty roomy. You have cup holders and then you do have a little center storage, which goes all the way underneath your cup holders in there. And then you have your door pockets, which has a cup holder in the front. And when we're looking at the door panel here, it's pretty simple. A little bit of Alcantara suede looking stuff there. Wood trim over here, which follows on the dash. There is how you open the door. It's electronic door popper, like the Corvettes and things. But there is a manual override in case you're trapped in. So everything else, as I mentioned, is over here controlled in this screen from all your steering and driving functions to your charging autopilot, um, to <laughs> updating this thing, which was one of the first experiences I had with it, was sitting in here for 30 minutes for a software update, which uh, makes me wonder about how doomed we are in the future with these cars. I hope that gets faster and better because I don't want to have to explain to my kid um, I was, you know, updating my car and that's why they're uh, late to pick up in the rain. So speaking of things you control with this screen, climate control. So this climate has been through a few updates, but as you know, this car doesn't have any physical looking winds, at least. Every, uh, everything behind the dash over there is a giant wind going around. And um, it's actually a pretty cool look, I like it. But this is like control where the air goes side to side. Oop. This is like control it up and down. It's pretty neat. And then you also have modes over here, like you have camping mode, you have your pet mode which is pretty neat. This is actually a reason I would get an electric car because I sleep in my car sometimes when I go camping and you know, it's either super hot or super cold outside. So that would be a good way to actually mitigate that stress and sleep pretty comfortably. It'll go until it's at 20% charge. So you gotta make sure you're near a charging station if you're gonna use those functions. So another thing I just figured out is heated seats. Not only you have your front ones over here, you also have rear heated seats, but what sucks about it is I need to be controlling it. So someone from the rear needs to ask me, hey, can you turn on my heated seats? And if I'm nice enough, then I can um, choose <laughs> to turn on their heated seats. This kind of sucks. I mean, it's cool that they put the elements in it, but how much more expensive would it be to put physical buttons so people can actually use this? Because even for 
the heated seats button for the driver, you still have to press this and then press that. It's not readily available like in most cars where it would be a button somewhere around here. Another thing on this thing I mentioned is the camera system. This particular one only shows you the three views, the rear and the two sides, which is pretty decent for the price point, but no crazy bird's eye view or anything like that. However, the quality is actually pretty good. Another thing on the Tesla, of course, you have a bunch of apps, which is pretty neat. You also have a shortcut access to the heated seats and your uh, heated steering wheel and things like that, which is also pretty nifty, but still a physical button would definitely be better. You can play games in this car when you're charging so you don't blow your brains out while you're waiting a whole hour to get this thing to full battery. A little bit less than that, I'm over exaggerating. But still, it's not as fast as putting some gas in it. You have to have some patience or nothing better to do with the day. Speaking of games, I played backgammon against Super Tesla and I beat that thing. So take that, Elon. This game is also sick. If you if you like Mario Kart, it's a bootleg version of it. It's kind of cool. Uh, you just kind of look dumb because you're running the wheels of the car left and right when it's charging. Speaking of the rest of the gimmicks of this thing, of course, you've seen the light show. You've probably seen all of these on TikTok or something, but yeah, we're still not gonna grow up and actually use this a little bit. Enough of that. Let's relax and get cozy. It actually starts blowing air through the winds when you do this, it's pretty cool. Another thing you can do with this thing is a whole light show. Let's see what it does real quick. Jesus. It says exit the vehicle. What the hell? This is so stupid. Moving on to the rest of the interior. This is your sun visor situation. It has an iPad cover on it, which is kind of nifty. Keep the seize the speed sticker. Let me know if you want one of these. There's a little camera up here, which uh, apparently isn't active yet, but it's there. So be careful, behave when you're in this car. Another cool thing that I mentioned in this thing is this ginormous glass roof, which is pretty cool, especially if you wanna put like a GoPro or something onto it. And you also have rear climate for your back seats. You also have USB-C to charge, nothing else. Pretty simple back seat. Let's see how I fit back here. All right, so let's hop in the back seat and see how's the space back here. Okay, so I'm about 5'10", sitting behind near my seating position. We have a pretty decent amount of leg room, although my feet are kind of stuck under the seat, so not a whole lot of uh, room back there. Because of this glass roof, it actually allows for quite a bit. If we had an actual headliner in here, it wouldn't be a whole lot, but since there's a layer of glass above my head, I have decent headroom over here. If I were in the middle seat, it would be a little tighter and closer to the roof, but still, it's usable. I can actually sit back here. Uh, and also, the legroom is not compromised because not like uh, a 3 Series or a rear wheel drive back seat. The floor is flat. All right, starting to rain pretty hard right as we're wrapping up our walk around. So, without further ado, let's take this thing for a drive. Let's see how the Model 3 actually performs on the road. Driving the Model 3 standard range rear wheel drive. <laughs> Dead silent. I mean, the only thing you guys are hearing right now is the air conditioning, and that's it. So, this car is not as punchy as you would think off the line, as I mentioned, is in the high fives, uh, 0 to 60. Um, and the fact that it's super silent makes you not feel like you're going as fast as you might be going which is a good thing and a bad thing it's a stealthy car doesn't attract a whole lot of attention when you're trying to you know downshift and go compared to something that i might be driving that might not have be um, you know having mufflers on it 
first thing you notice when you get behind the wheel of the Model 3 is the lack of a gauge cluster in your field of vision. It's kind of weird, but you do get used to it. And that chime was to tell me that the light is green. But you do get used to it. You just kind of have to look a little off center. But aside that, all your information is on this wonderful screen. You can do a whole lot with it, but you can do a whole lot with it. It's too much sometimes. You're trying to do some simple task. I don't know, mess with the aircon turn on your heated seats or something like that and especially for somebody if you're letting someone borrow your car they're not used to driving something like this it's gonna be interesting so the first off the line on this is pretty soft it's not gonna push you to the back of the seat and i think that's how it's uh tuned to be but what really amazes you is when you punch it going like 20 30 40 it's incredible the way it just slams your head to the seat no powertrain lag there's no transmission kick down there's no turbo lag there's no revving your engine it just hooks and books that's it going 30 right now not anymore we're not you can try again oh yeah i mean it's crazy that it does that while making absolutely no noise. I mean, it's just a little bit of, I don't know what to even call it, like powertrain noise, like gear noise, wind noise, something like that. That's it. And as far as handling goes, since this is the lighter Tesla compared to the rest of the Model 3s, this thing actually handles surprisingly well. And you don't need to worry about, you know, you're going through a corner in an automatic car, it might kick down and it might, you know, uh, lose traction. With this thing, it's super predictable. You know exactly how the car is gonna behave. The steering has a little bit of lag tuned into it for safety, but it's still super direct, especially when you put it in sport. It actually has a decent bit of weight to it, unlike a lot of modern cars. You can, of course, put it in the most relaxed mode and pretty much move it with one finger. As far as the safety features in this thing goes, I mean, I'm not even gonna get into all of that because there's plenty of videos out there that shows it. But it's top notch, it's pretty good technology. It'll keep you um, pretty safe on the road. You have all kinds of alerts, distances between the cars you're around. It can practically drive itself almost better than every other system that's out there right now. I'm gonna put it in autopilot and see what it does. Yeah, it's doing pretty good. Keeping its lanes, hands off. Yeah, it's not even the slightest bit of worrisome. It's actually doing a great job at seeing the lanes and this is a regular city road. It doesn't have very clear lines either. I mean, I could read a book right now or anything else other than drive. It's crazy. I mean, we've been replaced. If you really want this thing to drive for you, it will. And it'll do it well. You'll never have to drive again. That's the biggest selling point. I mean, aside it being electric and going uh, on a full charge right now for $20 and change, which with these gas prices, a regular, even good, good on gas hybrid vehicle would be at least $30, $40, maybe $50 to fill up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing up to speed and on the highway a little bit. I mean, regular driving on the road, it's just like any other small sedan, like your Corolla, Camry, Kia Forte. I mean, I'm sorry I keep comparing it to that, I, but sorry, not sorry. That's what it is. It's um, a really good at being a car. That's what it's uh, designed for and it does it pretty well, it does a pretty good job of it. Plus, a whole lot of extra features like the fact that it can practically drive itself. It's pretty quiet, but it does have the frameless doors, so there is a bit of uh, wind noise coming in here. For the price range, compared to its um, rivals, like the things I talked about, even compared to a base 3 series, if you hate driving, and you want things like this, you want your car to just drive for you, 
and uh, you hate the noise a combustion engine makes you want something super silent and also you don't mind sitting 30 40 minutes at a time to charge this battery i definitely suggest a tesla uh, especially this one i mean it doesn't break the bank it's a pretty good deal especially if you hurry up and get one before the government incentives go away on these and i believe that is all i have for the tesla model 3 standard range let me know if you guys want me to get a performance or a model s or another electric car on the channel but it's been definitely an experience driving my first electric car i hope you guys enjoyed this review of the model 3 if you did make sure to smash that like button subscribe to my channel if you're not a lot of new videos coming out so make sure you are subscribed a whole lot of uh, different reviews different project stuff coming to the channel real real soon but as far as this one goes this one is over so thank you so much for watching have a great day peace out and i'm out